I hope you're enjoying DevNet Create. I appreciate you joining me to talk about diagrams and Python, at least from a network engineer's perspective. Just Say No to Visio has been a theme of mine for the last several years. It's a deliberately provocative title to make people think about kind of what we're doing. There's nothing more valuable than a, than a good diagram, and I don't know of any network engineer that doesn't spend a significant amount of time in Visio or another drawing package creating those diagrams. I actually want to have this discussion with you uh, with regards to Excel and Word and PowerPoint, and that's because I want to apply some of the things I've been learning through network automation. I want to apply those same things to my documentation. My name is Claudia DeLuna, and I've been doing networking uh, and automation in one form or fashion uh, for most of my career. So I want to have all of my documentation under revision control. I want to use the same tools I use today for my code, for my documents, uh, for my diagrams, um, basically have the workflow for end-to-end -end kind of network engineering tasks follow kind of the same concepts. I want to achieve that immediacy and repeatability uh, that I can get with code, and I want to apply that to my documentation, and that includes my diagrams. I'm not going to be able to do uh, the visualization uh, landscape uh, much justice at all, but I do want to highlight a few things to get you started. First of all, Graph is, is actually an application, not a Python module, that you'll install on your system. And most of the Python modules actually use that as sort of uh, its, its base, uh, the underpinnings, if you will. GraphIs comes with uh, the concept of the dot language, which is actually a textual way uh, to describe your diagrams. There's a module called PyGraphIs, and that actually lets you interact with GraphIs kind of natively in Python. And we'll take a look at a script that uses that module. There are a few others uh, that let you do the same kind of thing with a dot language, PyDot, PyDot Plus. Those don't seem to be maintained too much right now. Uh, there's an incredibly powerful package called NetworkX. Um, you may have heard of Matt. Plot live. Maybe you're thinking that there's really no play for a network engineer. Uh, it's very kind of scientific. Uh, but actually, I've had a lot of success doing histograms uh, of stack sizes at a particular site. Um, Pillow is uh, a derivative of Pill, and that lets you do image manipulation. Uh, you might think there's not a play there, uh, but actually one of the things I've been able to do is generate very uh, detailed install instructions um, so that I have a base image. It's just a base uh, JPEG, and then I overlay details uh, for a specific uh, installation, and that saved a tremendous amount of time. There's a Python module called Diagrams. That's right now one of my favorites, and we'll take a look at using it. And then uh, there is uh, Mermaid, which is not really uh, a Python module, although there is uh, a Python module for it. But uh, the really interesting thing here is that Mermaid offers uh, kind of a live editor and an API where I can actually send my text-based diagram uh, to this API to have it render. So let's take a look uh, at a few kind of keywords uh, that certainly help me. Um, visualization is its own discipline, and of course it has its own language. A node for a network engineer is going to be uh, a Cisco switch, uh, an Arista switch, basically your network device. And usually in these drawing tools, you'll have to kind of initiate a node. An edge connects nodes together, and you'll have to do the same thing. So you'll have to initiate kind of a connection uh, between two nodes. Attributes are just exactly what you think they are. They're just a way to manipulate your diagram, color, font size, that kind of thing. Layouts was an aspect of visualization of the terminology that threw me for a while. You'll hear things like dot and neato. The way I've been able to summarize it and kind of understand it myself, uh, there are directed graphs. That means that from node A to node B, there's an edge and there's an arrow at the end. Um, showing directionality. 
digraphs, uh, dot, those are some of uh, the layouts that you may uh, come across that are directed graphs. On directed graphs, just as you would expect, there's no arrow on either end of the line. Um, Undirected graphs are interesting. Uh, they are uh, useful for lots of nodes and different algorithms try and kind of help position the nodes. Um, circular graphs uh, I don't use too much. I'm usually hanging out in the directed graph area, although recently uh, I've seen more and more circular graphs uh, denoting kind of application flows. Um, so when you're dealing with ports, protocols, those kinds of things, I'm beginning to think that the circular graphs might actually uh, start getting some use. We're going to talk about three use cases. When I get a new client um, and they happen to share show commands or they, they get me access to their network, I want to look at the current topology. A lot of times uh, they'll make available uh, a Visio diagram. Um, but a lot of times it hasn't been updated in a long time, and there's always that caveat. Oh, sure, we have a drawing. Uh, yeah, but we haven't updated it in a while. You know what? I want to go in, and I just want to do a quick look. And so the ability to go in and use one of these drawing tools and maybe uh, get a show CDP neighbor uh, output and parse it and draw it out, tremendously helpful for me. Application flow diagrams I've already mentioned, and again, I'm having occasion to do more and more of those. Um, so we'll take a look at maybe drawing some of those out. Uh, they're going to come in real handy if you have to put in a request to the firewall team. And then customized instructions kind of builds on a diagram. So in customized instructions, we're going to take a look at putting a diagram that we've created and putting it in a document or a report. Uh, again, just trying to kind of grow the different ways we can approach our documentation. All right, let's take a look. We're going to start with our current topology, like I mentioned. This first script, you can see, uses PyGraphis. It's going to be pretty simple. It's, uh, this is a completely static script. It's basically taking the output of show version and show CDP neighbor detail. Uh, I've already gotten those. They're in a file. In fact, I've already parsed them, right? So they're in, uh, think of them as uh, in a Python data structure. That's easy for me to use. And then I'm going to send all that information to a, a little function that's going to draw things out for me. You can see here I'm creating a root device. I'm instantiating the graph. You can start seeing some of the terminology we talked about briefly, directed. Strict is another interesting one. If, st if strict is true, then you can only have one line between your nodes. A lot of, for a lot of network diagrams, you want strict to be false because you'll have multiple connections, even among the same nodes. Remember we talked about attributes, so you can see me setting some attributes for this particular diagram. Here I've added a node to capital G. That's kind of my graph object. Now the node gets some attributes, and then here I'm actually cycling through the CDP neighbor list and creating objects and nodes and edges. Let's go ahead and run this. You can see that I created something in dot notation, and then a PNG format. Let's take a look what that looks like. So there's my diagram. It's OK. I think I need to manipulate uh, some of the attributes a bit more just to get less overlap. As you can see here, this is the text-based version of my diagram. Pretty neat. This is something that can easily be uh, put in revision control, right? Next, we're going to do something a little bit different. This is going to be real time. I'm going to use Scrapply to log into a network device and run the show commands that we talked about, show version, show CDP neighbor detail. And then in this case, I'm going to use the module I mentioned before, 
the diagrams module. This one actually is my personal favorite right now when I want uh, prettier diagrams, when I don't want to futz around too much with uh, attributes. Just seems to handle things a little bit uh, more uh, cleaner, a little bit more uh, simply. So let's go ahead and what I'm going to do here I'm going to give it the IP address of a network device in my lab. You can see that it ran and it created a, a JPEG. Let's take a look at it. So you can see here this is a little bit prettier, I think. Um, I did some totals. Uh, I've included model number. I've included what's called a cluster. And that's, uh, in this case, a services cluster where some devices I wanted to highlight is offering services at the site. And then the rest are, are just sta standard switches and I'm noting kind of how many links, that kind of thing. So. This is the kind of diagram that I would be happy to share with a client. Okay, here's what your network looks like today. Okay, so we've seen pie graph is, we've seen diagrams. Let's take a look at our next use case. In this case, I want to, to be able to describe application flows. So let's say I have an Excel file and I have ports, protocols, directions, right? Source, destination. You've seen these a thousand times. You've had to turn it into a diagram. Um, same thing with an access control list, right? I always draw out my access control list so I understand kind of what's going from where to where. So let's say I wanted to take this diagram and draw it out. I'm going to go ahead and use my application flow requirements script. This is doing something a little bit more sophisticated. Um, we are using pandas to read in the Excel file that has our flows. And then in this case, we are going to use Mermaid to render the diagram. So here, policy list of dicks is actually a list of dictionaries that has all the information about the flows. So let's go ahead and run this. So you can see kind of step by step, it's reading in the Excel file using pandas, it's processing the data and creating a mermaid sequence diagram in text. Then it's sending that text to Mermaid Inc to the API for rendering. I got an OK back. I'm obviously hitting a, a web page. And just a note that it successfully rendered the diagram. And let's take a look at what that looks like in a text file. That's the diagram in a text file. And the really neat thing is this long URL is actually the rendered diagram that you can see here. I think this is pretty neat. And then you'll see what we'll do in the next instance. Okay, and again, this is something that can be easily put under revision control. So now we're going to put it all together and provide a set of customized instructions. This can also be content that you could submit uh, on a change request ticket, things al of, along those lines. So in this case, I have to do custom flow diagrams for every site. This was a, a project I was on last year where we were deploying uh, Cisco LoRaWAN gateways at a variety of sites. Uh, and so each site has its own IPs, its own gateway, gateway has its own IP and the local subnet, uh, local DNS potentially, uh, local NTP. And so what I wanted to do is have a very customized diagram and set of instructions that I could give to the site, uh, share with the security team. 
And sure, I could do all of these with these uh, eight sites uh, individually. I already know how to do the diagram um, and I could manually update it, but who wants to do that? So I have two Jinja templates. This should look a little bit familiar. This is actually kind of that uh, text-based version of the first diagram that we saw, but it's got variables in it. And I'm gonna get those variables from that spreadsheet. The next thing is, this is a Jinja 2 template right now, but it will generate a markdown file. And this is something that you can PDF, you can even convert it to Word if you want, um, giving the site or the security team kind of the, the specific detail that they're gonna need uh, to help you open up those ports uh, on the firewall. So let's go ahead and execute our final script. Okay, you see that in a matter of seconds, it iterated through every site uh, that was in that spreadsheet and executed the same workflow. It created the mermaid di diagram in text. It sent it to the uh, Mermaid Inc. API for rendering. It saved the text to a text file, again, in case we wanted to keep it under a vision control. And then it created a, a document. So let's take a look. You might actually see, you can see all of the new files here. So let's take a look at the Amsterdam text file. And you can see here that it is detailed using the Amsterdam information that we provided for the gateway, for its IP, for DNS, and for NTP. And then we took that diagram and put it into a document. As you can see here, it's been totally customized for Amsterdam and it includes the diagram, contact information. Think about how powerful that would be and how much time uh, it could potentially save you. Let's take a look at the revision control capabilities. So you can see here, this is my repository on GitHub. I have my code here, and you can see the various changes I've made to my scripts. And down here, you can see my Jinja template for my document and changes I've made to it. And now with one tool, in this case GitHub, I can apply the same revision control processes that I'm used to now doing on my code to my documents. I don't know about you, but I think that's wildly exciting. So let's wrap it up. I want you to think about casting a wider net with your scripting and automation. You've got a lot of tools at your disposal now, um, a lot of new knowledge. Let's see where else we can apply that new knowledge. Every aspect of network engineering, from design to modeling, implementation, of course, that's kind of where we're at right now. Testing and documentation can benefit from a lot of these tools. I've put here a link to the repository as well as some interesting uh, links. The live editor Mermaid, for Mermaid that you saw me use, a, a, kind of a nice write-up about diagrams. And then Graphviz has a number of online editors to help you familiarize yourself with the dot notation or the, the dot language um, as well as Graphviz in general. Thanks so much.